The legends are true. We're overwhelming power! The sauce of destiny. Yes! The most legendary sauce has arrived as McDonald's transforms into the anime world of McDonald's. The greatest flavors unite in all new savory chili McDonald's sauce to make your 10 piece Wick Nuggets, fries, and Sprite ultra powerful. Unlock manga comics with every meal and sit down for a new anime short every week only at McDonald's. Ba da ba ba ba. Go! And participate in McDonald's for a limited time while supplies last. This episode is brought to you by Skinny Pop Popcorn. Perfectly popped, endlessly delicious. Oh, so light and crunchy. Skinny Pop Original Popcorn is the snack you've been searching for. Made with just three simple ingredients, popcorn kernels, sunflower oil, and salt. Snacking never felt or tasted so good. Perfectly popped, endlessly delicious. Give yourself permission to snack and pick up Skinny Pop Original Popcorn today. Cold One knows that your skin changes all the time. Like waking feeling hydrated, only to have dry skin after a walk on a cold day. Or having dull skin at work, to glowing skin for date night. <laughs> People don't have one skin, they have skins. And Gold Bond Lotion's clinically proven formulas contain seven nourishing moisturizers, plus three vitamins to help you take care of all of them. For all your skins, Gold Bond. Visit goldbond.com to learn more. Focus Features presents the American Society of Magical Negroes. Come again? A secret society tasked with making the world a more peaceful place. What's the most dangerous animal on the planet? Sharks. White people. Because the happier they are, the safer we are. Wow, that is troubling. But their newest recruit will change everything. It's always my job to make white people feel comfortable. It shouldn't be. Not according to my grandma. Oh, you gonna quote your wise black grandma to me? <laughs> the American Society of Magical Negroes. Ready PG-13. May be inappropriate for children under 13. Only in Peter's March 15th. This episode is brought to you by Crown Royal. This NBA season, Crown Royal is celebrating the loyal fans that show up for every tip-off. Whether they're serving up loaded nachos or shaking up crown and gingers, Crown Royal believes if you live generously, life will treat you royally. Visit crownroyal.com to get ready for tip-off. Please drink responsibly. another episode of the reality is as always it's newer and i'm here with my brother as promised to talk about traitors <laughs> traitors <laughs> now if you listen to the episodes with my brother you will know that i've been harassing him to watch the show and he was like rah, 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 what is the show blah 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 stupid stupid the last dance <laughs> listen you why don't you tell everybody how you consume this television show, Traitors, so what, season two? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, have you watched Traitors, Traitors season one? Of course. Oh, you have? So yeah. How come you didn't tell me about, was season one as good as season two? Yes. The really? best thing about season one was that they also had, like, regular people, normies, a bunch of normal people. Uh-huh. And... You know, my favorite thing about traders is that everyone's a dumbass. <laughs> and the normies were especially just like the dumbest people in the world. So that also made it like a different type of fun. But yeah, I, I watched so, of course, real anything that's on the cock, I'm going to watch it. <laughs> the cock, the cock. Um, so my experience with this was that I started, I was like, all right, the first episode, I'll start it. <laughs> Because you keep harassing me, right? And right off the bat, I was like, well, Scotland is beautiful. And you know I've been a Scotland bitch since Braveheart came out. Of I, course. I love seeing Scotland. And yeah. then I was like, okay, well, Alan Cummins is in it. And he is having a great time. He looks amazing. Yeah. Um, and the I, I think what sold me is the way that he says traitors. It's the, so stupid. It's so perfect, right? <laughs> So first episode, I was like, all right, well, let's see. Let's see how it is. At the end of like the episode, I was like, well, I kind of want to see what happens in the second episode. Right? <laughs> I was like, I'll watch two. I have the rest of the weekend to watch the rest. And then I just sat there and I watched all four episodes in one sitting. That was my <laughs> Friday night. Now, to be fair, I'm very, very sick. 
So, <laughs> you know, I was loopy and I was just having a great time. What a show. Yeah. It's so good. I just love that. Like, it's so dramatic. I love all the drone shots. I love, I love Alan Cummins. It's actually Alan Cumming. I don't think it's Alan Cumming Mins. I don't know why I keep saying that. I think it's Alan Cummins, right? Isn't it C U M M I N S? You know, a quick Google search will tell us it is Alan Cumming. Cumming. So yeah. No S at the end. Okay, no S. Alan Cumming. Oh, okay. okay. Just like the whole thing, the way he shows up, like when they're all, they all get there and they're all like having drinks on the lawn and he is standing there like kind of like just reading lines, like performing to somebody. Exactly. But they just like walk past him. It's just so good. That's the best part. He's in a completely different show than like the best (laughs) of these people. And he is having such a good time. It's so good. Um. Now you, I know you, we used to watch. The real world and also the challenge quite a bit. Yeah, in like the back early in the day. 2000s. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There are a couple of people on here from the challenge. Were mm-hmm. you excited to see any of them? So, I, you know, I know Johnny Bananas. Mm-hmm. I know CT. CT, by the way, has gotten like full, like, he looks like a Boston mass, like a, like an old school Boston guy now. He used to he be. He looks like a dad from Boston. He does, yeah. And he yeah. is low key one of the most attractive, I want to say, guys from the real world. Right, uh-huh. like, and the thing. So I was excited to see him again. I was sad to see Johnny Bananas get kicked off so early because apparently he's very spoiler loud. alert. Sorry, <laughs> this is not a spoiler-free recap of episodes one through four. FYI, yes. Um, so I was excited to see him. I was excited to see uh, the Housewives uh, because uh, you told me, like Phaedra, of course. Phaedra, I will always sign up for Phaedra. Yeah. Um, and then Sheree and stuff like that. You know, one thing I realized is Big Brother has never made an impact on us. Same. And neither has like, I want to say Survivor. like. Survivor. Survivor, exactly. We watched maybe, we followed maybe the first year, maybe the second year. But no, those are mm-hmm. not our shows at all. Mm-mm. No. I'm a Bravo bitch and an MTV bitch. And yeah. even trashily a VH1 bitch. But never a C. Like CBS. It's just not it for me. No, not at all. Especially no. Big Brother. Like, I, I don't know how anybody watches Big Brother. No, I don't want to be offensive really because a lot of our friends do. And offensive. by our friends, I mean my friends. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure they're going to take great offense to us talking trash about Big Brother. But yeah, people came in here, like, watching the show, rooting for, you know, because it's kind of broken up by, like, it's so funny. There's, like, gamers, which are people from game shows, like shows where mm-hmm. you are doing competitive gaming reality TV, and then you have reality TV people. And then you have the odd politician, John, with the breathing issues. Yeah, I don't know what the hell that was. I don't. Like but it's either. so – but I prefer that, that better than – the last season where they had normals on here. Mm-hmm. But um you had you did have one sports person reheal. Two technically. Uh, one. I don't consider Marcus Jordan a sports person. I actually consider him a reality TV person because he's like pretty much on Real Housewives of Miami now. Oh, is he on it? And so yeah. one of the thing I, I I don't know what order we're gonna go into, but one of the things that tickled me uh, like crazy was in the beginning of the first episode when they're doing like the credits and stuff mm-hmm. they show marcus jordan like playing chess and i'm like yeah noted chess player marcus jordan <laughs> <laughs> what well, what what are they gonna do have him shoot hoops in the middle of scotland yeah, scotland <laughs> Um, I, you know, you mentioned like how dramatic it is and stuff like that. I love the interstitials, like, (laughs) especially because like a lot of these people have to act like when they're like getting out of bed, if there's like something so funny, so fun. That's also new having, showing them in their, um, sleepy sleeping, uh, quarters. Cause last year that was one thing that confused me. It was like, when did they go off to sleep and who sleeps where? Mm -hmm. And like, because essentially They go to sleep at night. They wake up and they find out who's been murdered. Mm -hmm. And so I wasn't sure what the setup was. I love that this season they showed us their sleeping quarters. But obviously it's like these glamour shots of like hilariously Larsa reading. And like (laughs) (laughs) and like just people sleeping in bed with full face of makeup on, you know, stuff like that. Now, we don't think that they're actually staying in the castle, right? Like most of it is a set. No, they are staying in the castle. 
I don't believe it. Like, when the traitors are having their meeting or whatever, that's not actually the castle, is it? You don't think so? It is. No. Yes. No. It reminded me of, this is, I think this is just a Middle East and maybe a UK thing. But the first time that they showed, like, the dungeon with uh, Alan Cumming and the two traitors, yeah. um, it reminded me in that moment of the Crystal Maze. Do you remember the Crystal Maze? Of course I remember the Crystal Maze. Crystal Maze, was that also hosted by a Scottish man? Or am I just uh, making that up? No, it was hosted by an Englishman. Okay. Was Not a guy, the same. I don't know what his name is, but he's a guy who I believe uh, came up with Rocky Horror Picture Show. That's oh. that guy. Yeah. Okay, I Googled it. The traitor's host revealed that not even the cast stays in the castle. Of course. They all stay in a far less glamorous um, Iverness Airport Hotel. Yeah, of course. That was one of my, I don't, I don't know if we're going to go in order, but like that was one of my favorite things when um, when one of the guys, when, when one of the cast members got kicked off. I, do you want to go in order? Of like yeah, the- let's go in order of the episodes. So first episode, they're all getting to know each other. Um you didn't watch the show, but I watched one season of it called Bling Empire. That's where uh, that's where the Asian guy Kevin is from. Mm-hmm. Kevin's a dumbass. Kevin, uh, now I don't know if this is uh, racist of me or not, but he is giving me Jason from the good uh, from the what's that called? The good uh, what was the Kristen uh, Bell show? The Good Life? No, The Good Place. The Good Place. Yeah, he yeah. is giving me Jason from The Good Place. But <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Place. Also, like bordering on racist, I think, but yeah. I can see the comparison because he also is a dumbass. He's a dummy. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, and so attractive. And so attractive. Yeah. Um. So we find out on episode one. Now, episode one, they pick the traitors and they do it by Alan walking around in a slow circle and just tapping people on the shoulder, and then. You know, chaos ensues right after that because people just people just start <laughs> blaming people stuff. And I love Larsa because she's like, guys, listen, my hearing is really good. It's your, like Larsa says things with such conviction that I'm like, I see why I, people believe her. But she's just like, no, you guys like my hearing is like really good. You guys like I heard his I hurt his jacket. I could like feel the vibe of his jacket tapping Parvati on the shoulder. Yeah, she, she felt the vibration, she said. <laughs> It's amazing. I was like, what? We can do that? Yeah. And then you had John, the politician, having a panic attack, probably. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like he had that situation where you're like, I have to stay extremely quiet, so I'm just not going to breathe. And then you like, you're like, oh, no, I can't sustain this any longer. And if I gulp, I'll be given away. And then at some point, you're like, it's all unraveling. That's it. I'm done. Exactly. I'm done. Exactly. Yeah. I forgot what the first mission was on episode. Oh, they had the mission and like the with the swimming and the shield the and the maps. And the shield, exactly. Yeah. If you were in that situation in these challenges, would you always go for a shield instead of a of completing the mission? I was going to ask you. So I think I can survive on personality for at oh. least the first couple of episodes. You I was going mean? to say you would kill it on a show like Traders. I think so. Because I think I would be like, I'd be like, hey, guys, I'm going to the CVS in Edinburgh. You guys need anything? I can pick up stuff. (laughs) This guy's a good guy. Yes. You would run two errands for them and they'd be like, we can't get rid of Raheel. Who's going to be our little errand boy? Um, You, on the other hand, too loud. (laughs) No, I would get kicked off right away. First of all, I'm too cunning. I have too many opinions. I would immediately... (laughs) think that I know. I'm like Larsa. I would immediately think that I know who the person is. Exactly. You can hear vibrations. I, you've always said that. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually the first words of out of my mouth as a child. <laughs> um, but l- l- I, I, yeah, I, I come in too bold, too confident, and I would immediately get picked off. Yep, exactly. That would be seen as a threat. Yeah. You would actually be a threat, but you would mask yourself so well mm-hmm. as a traitor. You yep. would be an amazing traitor. Yeah, I would be. Nobody would yeah. buy it. I would I would dangle my traitorness in people's faces. <laughs> I would just like I would just tell people like I'll just get people to kick you off. I you know how they're like, "Oh, you can't get into a fight with someone and then k- kill them the next day as traitors." Mm-hmm. I would be like, "No, that's exactly what we're going to do." Yeah, exactly. Um I don't know some of these people like these Love Island people. I don't know them because I don't watch that show. Um, but Ek and Sue is just so gorgeous. She's so hot. Wait, what kind of name is Ek and Sue? I think she's Turkish. Oh, really? Yeah, I think so. I may have made that up. 
Let's see. Ekin Sue. Um, but yeah, she is uh, stunning. It's crazy. Yeah, like, she, her like, last oh, name. All of these people are. Yeah, know, like, she's regular. British. She's she's a British Turkish uh, person because her last name has two umlauts and a U in it, like a okay. a U accent. It's C U L C U L O G L U. Okay, I'm not even gonna attempt. That. I don't know how to pronounce that. Yeah. Uh, it's oh, what? it's actually pronounced Jul Joloiju. Jul Joloilu. <laughs> That's what um, uh, oh, Wikipedia says. But yeah, she's uh, she's Turkish. God, she's so hot. She, you know, like I'm watching the show. I'm watching the show. I'm like, oh, everybody's kind of in like the same on like the same level for me. I have some favorites. Some people I don't know. Mm-hmm. Dan sucks, by the way. Um, I hate I'm sure Dan. we're going to get to him. But like Ekans, who from time to time, she like pops on screen. And I'm like, oh, my God, she's so hot. Like it takes me out of the show. People are. She has this whole monologue in the first episode. I just wrote down reasons for why she's smart, and none of it actually makes any sense. Yeah, it was amazing. It's so good. Yeah, she's so good. Well, the first mission, a bunch of people. Janelle gets a shield, and uh, uh, the traitors get to banish someone. It's the traitors are picked. It's Dan from Big Brother and Phaedra from Housewives of Atlanta. Yeah, Dan sucks. Like, even his, like, interview scenes, I'm like, are you reading? Like, what? You're so unnatural. I hate you so much. I hate that guy. Um, Right away, he, like, he's, like, you know, fully just, uh, like, a like a white male who's like, ah, this is, this is people are not expecting me, but this is what I was chosen for. I am the chosen one. Nobody's going to see it coming. He's, like, so excited. And also, he, like, downplays Phaedra right away he's like well you know she's just a housewife it's like no bitch she's a lawyer yes she's a famous lawyer and yeah. also the a business owner of many funeral homes yeah exactly and she's a lawyer and a funeral director what are you Dan <laughs> yeah what are I don't know what Dan's job is besides being on Big Brother so mm-hmm. like fuck you Dan um yeah I hated that that he was like well she's not really used to anything because she's just a housewife it was awful. And that's from that moment forward, I said, Dan can get fucked. Okay. Dan can get, and he's also a terrible player. He's like, well, you know, nobody's going to see me coming. But he's so obvious. Yes. He, that's why people pick up on it. Phaedra, on the other hand, does not change her personality one bit. She's like, you know what? This is a game. I am good enough on my personality. I don't need to do anything extra. I'm just going to yeah. continue. And I think people like me. Yeah. And I think that's why sp- kind of running ahead spoiler alert they feel threatened even the traitors feel threatened by yep. phaedra exactly um the first mission ends and they have murdered johnny bananas we find out in episode two um alan comes in and does his little mouth and he says you know what's not on the men- breakfast menu bananas <laughs> <laughs> oh god um, Johnny Bananas is gone, and Trishel just decides to pick on the black trans woman. It's amazing. <laughs> Trishel's energy in that moment is like uh, is like a white lady asking an eight year old if they have like a permit for a lemonade stand. It's you know what so I mean? Bad. She's just Ugh. she's just so she's like, ah, oh no, I read it. I I I found you out. Like, oh no, she, they, they, it's almost like somebody saying, like, no, no, those are gang signs. No, bitch. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. It's like uh, it's like the way I was accused, if you haven't heard the episode, about using secret coded language to alert Hamas. <laughs> really? Remember that guy who was like oh. blaming us? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, I barely know what words mean. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so they basically, uh, they come for peppermint, which is useless. I don't know why they do this, um, but... This is the episode where my favorite thing is like everybody trying to figure out their strategy and like talking about it. they're like, guys, we just need to figure out who's lying to us. And then people around them are like, yeah, yeah, you're right. They always just like react to it like it's the smartest thing in the world. It's yeah. just so silly. Um, I forgot what the mission was in episode two. Uh, I don't remember. either. Was that the one with the uh, with like the scarecrow? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the yeah. one with the scarecrow where they get to ask shady questions and then. Um, it's just so funny to me to see like Marcus Jordan like really try to play like he has a personality. Like it's just weird to me because it's like here's this person who was who claimed to be like out of the spotlight for his whole life and just like 
was his dad's son like no big deal and like now he's coming in in his 30s as like a full-fledged reality tv person it's just so strange to me i don't understand like his i guess not his person well i guess his personality is just a reality tv personality but like why he gets the reputation that he does everyone's like oh no marcus is very smart marcus (laughs) is like what his girlfriend is larsa how smart could he be (laughs) truly Uh, by the way this was my first real life exposure to larsa pippen and i had no idea that this is who she was i i you know i thought that you know you see like one of my friends is really obsessed with larsa pippen's instagram and 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 i was like okay maybe she's just like a hot no larsa pippen has a lot going on um in terms of being a character it's amazing you want to expand on that a little bit? I will when when we get to when Marcus uh, gets kicked off. It's amazing. So uh, episode two, um, everyone comes for Peppermint and she is banished. And that sends, what's his name, uh, Deontay into just a tailspin. He does not Ooh, like yeah. banishing people. And it's so funny. It's as if people really think that these people died. Yeah, it's poor Deontay was taking it too seriously. And Phaedra's like, oh, child, just relax. (laughs) It's too much for him. I felt so bad for him. He's like, I just, I don't like that feeling. It's like, dude, you know, (laughs) she's at a Holiday Inn Express, like, down the street. I know. And also, it's not like these people can go home after they're banished, because then otherwise people would find out. So they just hang out there until the show is over. Yeah. Episode three. Oh, we I should also point out that yeah. Parvati has been selected oh, as yeah. another. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah. So by episode two, uh, that's when they pick a third uh, traitor and traitor, and it's Parvati. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I'm not familiar with her because she's a survivor person, and I'm mm-hmm. not a CBS reality TV girl. So my only thoughts on Parvati, this is also my first time coming across her, um, and I was going to ask you is she makes a very deliberate choice of wearing headbands um and i don't know how i feel about somebody in their 40s um wearing a headband with every outfit i don't trust it uh well i I think it's intentional because i think a headband gives schoolgirl, and a schoolgirl is like automatically making you look like an innocent yeah exactly but again you're you know a lady in your 40s what are you doing with the headband (laughs) (laughs) this podcast is brought to you by at&t fiber with all Whether you're into watching horror movies from your basement, watching sports from your backyard, or watching trashy reality shows from inside your car that's parked all the way in the driveway so no one in your family judges you, AT&T Fiber with Allfy is the best way to watch whatever you want from wherever you are. Get AT&T Fiber with Allfy and add some Wi-Fi square footage to your house. Limited availability in select areas. Go to att.com slash hypergig to check eligibility. Coverage requires extenders at additional charge. This episode is brought to you by State Farm. You might say all kinds of stuff when things go wrong, but these are the words you really need to remember. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. They've got options to fit your unique insurance needs, meaning you can talk to your agent to choose the coverage you need, have coverage options to protect the things you value most, file a claim right on the State Farm mobile app, and even reach a real person when you need to talk to someone. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Tired of getting sketchy texts? Imagine having a lie detector that scans your texts, emails, and social media for risky links, alerting you to scams before you click. McAfee Plus is just like that. Stop scammers in their tracks before they get to you and your personal data. Learn about living a more secure and private life online with McAfee Plus and learn how to protect your everything at McAfee.com slash podcast. This episode is brought to you by Bin Verified. Help chip away at the uncertainty that comes with online dating and use binverified.com, a leading platform for online background searches and people search reports. With their powerful search tools and extensive database, you could easily gather information about potential dates, which may help you find peace of mind before taking that next step. You can never be too safe when it comes to dating. Get 20% off today to help take control of your dating game. Visit binverified.com slash podcast. David's Bridal where brides and bridesmaids get fabulously dressed. We let our friends pick out what we wear, show off our dance moves, obsess over every little detail, hold your hand through it all, smile bravely when it's time to let go. 
Make your dreams come true. The things we do for love. Only at David's Bridal. Introducing Royal Caribbean's newest ship, Icon of the Seas, the ultimate family vacation. The ultimate six slides, eight neighborhoods, zero compromise vacation. The ultimate never done that, can't wait to do it vacation. The ultimate chillin' by a different pool every day of the week vacation. This is the Icon of Vacations. Icon of the Seas, arriving in 2024. Book today. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. Find a fresh take on a fall getaway to Wilmington, North Carolina and beaches. Enjoy hiking trails in a state park, fresh seafood with a sight of live music and fall festivals galore. Then live it up along the Riverwalk in Wilmington's historic downtown with three island beaches, Carolina, Curie and Wrightsville and a vibrant downtown. You get the best of the Carolina coast all in one place. Plan your fall getaway at Wilmington and beaches vacation.com. This episode is brought to you by Watches of Switzerland. Elevate every moment with a new watch from Watches of Switzerland. They have one of the largest selections of new and pre-owned timepieces in the U.S. And they carry some of the most prestigious brands like Tudor, Cartier, Omega, Tag Heuer, and more. So come discover the perfect watch for all your adventures. Browse the entire collection at watchesofswitzerland.com. Why does this room look amazing? What'd you change? I just got these custom shades from blinds.com. It's all online, so it's really easy. I remember shopping for blinds. I waited around all day just to get a quote. It took forever. And the worst part, hidden fees. How about you? I chatted with my blinds.com design consultant on my time. Plus, they make it easy to DIY or add installation like I did. Blinds.com sounds way better. Way better. Shop blinds.com for 40% off site-wide. Rules and restrictions may apply. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Do you have a point of sale system you can trust or is it <clears throat> a real POS? You need Shopify for retail. From accepting payments to managing inventory... Shopify POS has everything you need to sell in person. Go to shopify.com slash system, all lowercase, to take your retail business to the next level today. That's shopify.com slash system. Um, also, whenever things are getting really tense and they cut to Parvati's face, she's making like an intentionally like paying attention face. And I'm like, yeah. this is so fake. Like, and again, I'm watching this and I'm, thinking you guys are all really dumb yeah yeah um episode three they have another mission this one is is this the one where they have the graveyard thing with the lights with the yeah with the lights and stuff like that and this is where i didn't really know this man before but this is bergy from yeah. love island and i'm like uh-huh. how I love that his whole thing is like people think that i'm like manipulated easy to manipulate and like i'm not or like people just think like I like can't do anything by myself, but like I I can. And I'm like, I first of all, I don't know how old you are. Secondly, like, I don't know. I feel like there's like a there's like a diagnosis there. Like I don't I can't tell what's going on with Bergy. See, you're a bad person. I love Bergy. Oh no, I'm I not saying ta- listen, Bergie. first of all, I'm not saying he's a bad person, okay? I'm just saying, how did this sweet baby boy end up on reality TV? <laughs> He's great. Okay, I like, love Bergie. Like, I feel like somebody said to Bergie, like, yeah, Bergie, you would do great on reality TV. So he was like, okay. And so he just, like, applied. And there he is. Now, again, I don't know his personality from Love Island. It's possible he's a dick. I don't know. But, yeah, Bergie, sweet Bergie finally gets them some money because he he's like, guys, listen to me. Please, guys, listen <laughs> to me. And then he finally, uh, they do listen to him and they get some money. Um and before, so Marcus gets kicked off before that, right? Does Marcus he? Gets yes. Killed, yeah, yeah. So that yeah, they have another. They've got another banishing with Parvati on, and this time Marcus has been killed, and Larsa reacts to it <laughs> <laughs> again, like it's a real death. Larsa, this is my favorite part of the show. I think so far is uh, Alan uh, coming hands her like Marcus's picture frame, and she accepts it like a World War Two widow, like accepting <laughs> like an honor flag. And she's like crying, and she's like, "I will avenge his death." Like she's like Liam Neeson and Taken. It's amazing. It's so stupid. 
<laughs> so soon and she's like guys like i'm i'm like really serious like i will find out who the traitor is guys like mm-hmm. i'm like see and here's the thing larsa gets so close because she's like something's up with dan yeah something's up with dan you guys i could tell something's up with dan and i don't know what happens it's deontay deontay suddenly turns everybody on to max from dancing with the stars max who i feel like is barely there like they're like because you were giggling at the last banishment when peppermint first of all max was the only person being like it's not peppermint you guys it's you guys are obviously just it's a herd mentality i don't believe it's peppermint you guys are being ridiculous and then deontay's like well max giggled when peppermint (laughs) got banished so and again deontay gets really into it they banish max as soon as max is like i'm a faithful deontay loses his mind yeah he can't handle it he He can't go on he can't go on there's just sadness larsa is a widow grieving (laughs) and (laughs) deontay like they have that party because now the new uh they get the traitors are sent a letter that they need to do a murder in plain sight Mm -hmm. and uh it's everybody's like moving around the house and partying or whatever (laughs) deontay at one point just sat like he's mumbling to himself and he goes yeah. up he's like i i can't i can't do this you guys i can't i'm like somebody needs to tell this man that they're still alive <laughs> <laughs> poor deontay I, I really felt bad for him in that moment because i think he was close to max and like he already felt bad about like you know what they did to peppermint and yeah. so like when he came for max he was sure he was like yeah. no i am sure and then that illusion got uh destroyed i like max do you like max I'm, I'm with Max. I don't care about Max. Like I, I feel no way, good or bad, about Ma- Max. He was I, like, okay, he's there. I like Max because he gave Trishel shit after yeah. she got Peppermint kicked off, and then she just tries, just like a, you know, any other like privileged lady, she just comes and tries to sit with them. And Max is like, you know, that was your doing. This is your fault. <laughs> and then Trishel starts to cry, and she leaves. Yeah. Um. Now this murder in plain sight. This is when I I was watching this and I was like, oh, God, I hate myself for how much I love the show. I was panicked, panicked watching this. Yeah. Man. And, you know, that's the thing about this show is the challenges are pretty good. They're the so murder. Good. It's like, it's like I was like, it was really tense. Um, now, in that scenario, I don't think there's any way that you would take the cup of anybody else and take a drink from it. But I, I think I would. You would. You would happily. Yeah. You would yeah. get, it would be so easy to murder. But also <laughs> I was like, why didn't you just murder Bergy? Like Yeah. That would have been an easy one. Mm-hmm. He would have he would have drank it right away. He would have drank it, but then he would have also remembered who gave him mm-hmm. the drink, you know? Yep. And okay. also Parvati's so stupid, she was like, Okay, I'm the bartender today. I'm like, bitch, what are you doing? <laughs> and I just love I love that Phaedra is onto their shit because she's like, You're not what you're not gonna do is try to murder one of my people. Yep. And the fact that the fact that um, already early on, even before they had recruited Parvati, Dan and Parvati had already started talking to each other and like trying to confide with each other. So I have a feeling and this is going into conspiracy theory land, but I have a feeling that all these CBS people talk to each other before they got on the show. Yeah, yeah. And and we're like, listen, if one of us is a traitor, we're going to save each other. And then at the end, it'll just be like us playing against each other, and like but, best man wins. But I think maybe the Bravo people also do that, right? I mean, there's familiarity, so that makes sense. Like Phaedra, there's a reason why she's like, no, nobody's coming after Sheree. Yeah, but that's as well as her friend. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think it's different because the housewives are actually sort of friends with each other. Like the Bravo people are like Phaedra and Tamara, and uh, they're like actually friends, whereas like. The gamers are have actually been competing with each other on all these shows. So they're actually like enemies mm-hmm. from the same shows. Yeah. I like how Tamara was the one that was obsessed with the asthma, right? Hilarious. She was like, John, do you have an inhaler? And he's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> and then they're like, you said that you had asthma. And he said, no, I said I was asthmatic. And she's like, no, that's not what you said. You said that you have uh, that you have that you have asthma. And if you have asthma, you should have an inhaler. That's just like <laughs> John was like, I have a touch of the asthma. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, they do this murder in plain, plain sight. 
they get Ekinsu to drink the from the chalice. Sweet baby girl has no idea she's even done it. Oh, yeah. But the next episode opens with episode four opens with everybody walking into the breakfast room and nobody has died. And I loved before they even everybody actually came in when Phaedra and Dan and Parvati are talking and Parvati tells them that tells Phaedra that it was Ekansu. She just keeps going, child, no, not Ekansu, <laughs> sweet Jesus, not Ekansu. I just like love that that's Phaedra's like baseline all the time. That's why mm-hmm. she's not going to be caught. And I yeah. think that's why they are so threatened by her. Yeah, exactly. Also some racism. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, there's clicks. There's the Bravo click. There's the gla- gamer click. There's what they call the faithful click. And then there's just a dumbass Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> I like that at one point, Tamara's like, I'm just going to vote for Kevin because he's annoying. Yeah, because <laughs> he chews with his mouth open. Okay, that's a solid reason to kill somebody, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, They have this funeral event. Incredible. You know, uh, I was going to ask you, I would not last. I, I cannot get into a coffin. No way, no how. You cannot get me into a coffin. That is my nightmare. I yeah, really I'm claustrophobic. extremely claustrophobic. Mm-hmm. So I would not have appreciated that. But I've never gotten an MRI or a CT scan for that reason. I probably should have had like seven so far. <laughs> so many. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've gotten a couple of uh, I've got a couple of those. They're not that bad. I can't. No. Yeah. No way. Um, I would freak out. Yeah, <laughs> you'd be like, "It's me, it's me. I'm the one. I did it." Okay, that would be how they get you. <laughs> um, I like the point where the first question is something about like age, and then MJ is like, "No, nope, Mm-mm. not today." <laughs> and then Sandra is like, "I thought Larsa was ten years older than me." <laughs> Sandra, we haven't talked about Sandra, but Sandra is awesome. Yeah, I love her because she's part of like the Bravo clique. But then she's also like to Larsa, she's just like, I don't like you. You have a big mouth. I think you talk too much. Sandra's not a Bravo person. She isn't, but she put herself in the Bravo. Oh, and did the click. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. Look at you. You paid more attention than I did. (laughs) The funeral is very, very dramatic, uh, but very fun. I had a a great time. Um, And I just love that at some point, Ekansu is just like, you know what? It's me, isn't it? It's just me. And I, again, Trishel hating on Ek and Sue for no reason at all. Yeah. She sucks. I think Trishel and Dan are my least favorite people. I've hated Trishel since the beginning. Can I just say? Yep, exactly. Since just the worst. worst. She was what, Vegas? Vegas. Vegas, yeah. No. Yeah, that's when real world got real slutty. Yeah. It was Trishel. Anyway, um, yeah, so they have this uh, dramatic funeral. They don't win any money. Ek and Sue is dead. And then they go to the voting, and this is when it really goes Bravo versus gamers. And Parvati and Dan basically decide that they are going to b- come together and betray their fellow traitor and say, let's just put the uh, target on the housewives because yep. somebody's going to figure us out first before they figure out Phaedra. Phaedra will never get caught. So let's just put it on them. And we have an all out. Housewives versus Gamers uh, roundtable, which was delightful to me because I was obviously pro Housewives. Yeah. And I loved when Phaedra was like, don't fucking play this game with me. Okay. These people are strangers to me too. Don't, don't you do this shit to me. And it just, it, it brought me a lot of joy. And also Parvati's like, they perform all the time. They're, they're Housewives. They're constantly performing. I'm like, no, unfortunately, yes, there is some performance as a housewife, but as you could see, these people are just cuckoo banuno on their own. Look at Larsa. Yeah, exactly. I think they're just naturally like dramatic and theatrical people, right? Yeah. Like Whereas, I think Phaedra, it's yeah. like um uh the prestige. Like the you know, the the trick is to stay in character the entire time. Like yeah. you never see Phaedra outside of character. So exactly. When it takes her like less than half a second to figure out what the fuck uh Parvati and uh Dan are doing. She's like, no, bitch, yeah. you don't try yeah. this with me. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. And that's why, okay, so uh, also in this is when um, Larsa, <laughs> I don't know what it was, something something happens 
where oh Janelle comes for Larsa. She's Janelle's the one that campaigns everybody against Larsa during the banishment. And she says something about like, I, you know, I think that you're weird. She says something like, I just think that you don't, I can't trust you. And then Larsa's like, well, I think you're weird. So maybe that's why I can't trust you. It's just like great. It was just Larsa in her prime doing her Larsa thing. Now, now do you like Larsa? I'm going to miss her on the show. I yeah. think I think the show is going to miss her personality. She was a yeah. lot of fun. She was. Um, I, Larsa I, I, on I, Real Housewives I, of one Miami. Of the, at yeah. one of the breakfast things, Larsa's yeah. like, everybody from my inner circle is dead. Like, it's all about her. I was like, oh, you delusional kook. This is amazing. <laughs> I know. She's like, you guys really think I would kill my own boyfriend? <laughs> He's alive. <laughs> Right down the street. It's having a continental breakfast as we speak. He's at the same hotel that you are staying at (laughs) at night where you go. (laughs) Um, Larsa's banished. Uh, A funny thing is when they go around voting, I think some people vote for Kevin just on the basis of him being annoying. But Phaedra writes his name Kelvin. (laughs) (laughs) Ugh. Uh, the episode ends with uh, a meeting with the traders and Phaedra giving it to Parvati. Yep. Mm, 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 mm. No, no, I love it. Nobody fucking it. likes you and they think that you're a traitor. Parvati. <laughs> and she goes, and you don't try that either, Dan. <laughs> the best. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. So it's like really obvious what's happening here. And, uh, mm-hmm. and, and also like those women might be like performers, but like these guys are only famous for backstabbing each other on these game shows. That's what Survivor and Big Brother are all about. So why would, we, why would we think anything else? Well, at some point also CT starts to get votes. Oh, that's, this is the one where they tried to vote for CT against Larsa. Cause oh, Larsa's- yeah, because there's like an alpha male thing, but like it has to be an alpha male. Who's it's in so charge silly. of this entire thing? It's so silly. The alpha male thing is so stupid. <laughs> but also, like, the fact that she's like, yeah, you're, like, getting rid of all the alphas. And, like, you're the only alpha left. Like, the fact that she speaks that way. And as I'm like, Larissa is just, I know the exactly the kind of person she is. And mm-hmm. it's the worst kind of person. Yeah. Also the best kind of person. Okay. The worst uh, and the best. Larsa, do you know this is Larsa's, like, fourth face? Have you seen what Larsa Pippen used to look like? I remember Larsa Pippen from 1997 when she got married to Scotty Pippen. And I remember seeing a picture of her in, I think, People. Um, and I was like, oh, my God, that lady's so beautiful. Um, but, yeah, I have not followed the changing faces of Larsa Pippen. But it was it was something. Yeah, I definitely Her face is it. brand new. In this show, her voice is probably the voice that she uses more regularly, used to use regularly with her old face. But on Real Houses of Miami... She talks like this all the time. She never like really raises her voice. She has like a soft like baby girl voice. But I like in this one where she's like, my boyfriend is dead. <laughs> and I will avenge his death. <laughs> There's a shot of, I think it's Phaedra, Larsa, MJ, and Tamara walking out during the funeral. And they're just like in furs. It looks like a scene from The Sopranos. Like, <laughs> it's so stupid. Uh, now, who do you think wins this whole thing? I hope Phaedra wins. Yeah. I'm pulling for Phaedra and, is it what, Bergie? Like yeah. Bergie <laughs> and Phaedra. I like Bergie. I, I think that would make a good. I want to get rid of Dan right away. I want Dan to be found out. Also, like, the uh, the Faithfuls are just doing a terrible job. They're so dumb. It's so bad. They're so, so stupid. And they get so easily distracted by the dumbest things. Like, the fact that they voted Peppermint out because Peppermint had a reaction that Trishel, like, found suspicious because Trishel is racist. (laughs) Like, that. Or, like, even, like, you know, Max. Well, Max's behavior changed a little bit. So, like, (laughs) now we don't believe him. Right? And, like, Marcus. Well, Marcus got killed. But who else got banished? Yeah, and then Larsa, right? It's only mm-hmm. been three people banished so far, and everybody else has been killed. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, they just voted on Larsa because, again, I think that now they're coming for Housewives. And I think so, too. Yeah. I feel like the producers were not anticipating the Faithfuls being as bad as they are, so they're going to have to change the rules because they are just dropping cast members left and right. 
There's yeah, like, but that's that's the point of the show. There's like five people that have been kicked off and, you know, that are no longer on the show. And they've all been faithful. I would love for you to watch season one in your fever dream stage right now that you're in. <laughs> yeah. Because it's so bad and it's so good. It's just like the best show. Ugh. The missions are so good. Everybody also comes in with a confidence that is, uh, it just remains unchallenged, except for when they are absolutely wrong. And then they're like, whoops. Like, Sheree will randomly throw a random vote out there. And then I think when they voted off uh, uh, Max or something or Larsa. Mm hmm. She turns around and she's like, oh, no, I think maybe it was Peppermint. She's like, this is because of you guys. Like, well, yeah. you also voted her off. And then she's like, I'm not happy about what happened. And she's like, yeah, you, you voted for her. <laughs> so stupid. I like Max in that story, in that part, when he's just like, because Trichelle's trying to make it like a big thing. Like, oh, no, the reaction. And Max is like, it's non-story. Non-story. I don't think anything <laughs> happened. <laughs> I know. I miss Max. I like that guy. All right. Wow. He, look he at you. Reminded me a little bit of Ryan Gosling and Barbie. Just no. Um. I mean, I don't see it, but <laughs> congratulations to you. I guess. <laughs> um. Well, I'm glad I got you on the traitor's hook. Unfortunately, yeah. they're only doing episodes one episode a week, which I think is bullshit. What What's the point of having a tre- f- streaming platform if you're going to drop one episode a week, like a cable television show? But they're hour long episodes. So I was thinking, I was like, can goofy. each episode be like forty five minutes? It probably could, if you if you take away the interstitials and stuff like that. And I'm like, do I want to get rid of the? <laughs> no, it's amazing. It's a full it's a full fifty nine minute show, a yep. full fifty nine minute show without ads. Like yeah. if you're watching Peacock with ads, first of all, don't. It's like six dollars to pay for Peacock without ads. Okay, but. Uh, there's so many cutaways, dramatic cutaways to commercial when there's no commercial. You would be sitting there for three hours watching yeah. one episode. Oh, it's so good. Well, Raheel, thanks. Thanks for yeah, spending yeah. your afternoon with uh, evening, your Friday night with none other than Alan Cumming himself. Yes. I'm glad that it was delightful and I'm glad you finished it in a week. I mean, in a day. In a day. Four straight episodes. <laughs> I was like, am I gonna do this after like the sec after like midway through the third episode? I was like, yeah, I don't think this train is stopping. I think I want to <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> Listen, I feel like I've never led you astray. Yeah, you know, I think you like Scary Island more than um, I do. Well, no, I watch Scary Island. When you say Scary Island, do you mean Ultimate Girls Trip? The no, the Scary Island, the first one. No, and- I, listen. I had watched Scary Island with you when we recapped it recently for the first time after probably the first time it aired. Mm-hmm. And my my feelings have changed because I'm a different person now. <laughs> <laughs> with mental health issues themselves, okay. Oh, you're muted. Oh, you're muted. You're I'm, muted. I'm sorry. <laughs> my feelings on this show now are I'm actually recommending it. Oh, okay. you're recommending yeah, yeah, yeah. traitors to way. people. Yeah. Oh, great. I love that. Well, thanks, Raheel. Thanks for being here. Um, I'll be back later next week to talk about whatever Bravo stuff. Okay, bye. Bye.